Yo, 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 what's going on, man? This is your boy, Super Mario. You in the yo with your boy, man. Today, man, we're going to talk about how we can separate the lows from everything else on your reverb return track. You ever had that drum kit that it wasn't divided up in individual channels or tracks or whatnot, and it was just a drum kit or someone sent you a stem uh, to collaborate on and they didn't give you kick, snare, hi-hat, open hi-hat, and a bunch of other percussion stems or whatnot, and you just got one wave file, and it was a boom, whatever the case may be. Yeah, and you want to add reverb to the clap and the hi-hats and everything like that, but you can't because it's a two-track wave file. I'll show you a little something right quick, man, today, man, um, here in Able to Live using only able to live plugins man are you ready yeah i got you man but before we get up into able to live though man i just want to say this go ahead and like this video man if you like it and also hit the subscribe button on this particular channel and stuff like that and i appreciate you yes you for tuning in and checking out this video as well man your support is very 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 welcome and stuff like that and i salute you man uh for supporting this channel for real for real man so you know how to work that youtube app man go ahead and hit that like man and we're gonna get up in here into able to lie man and check out what we got going on i got a beat uh that i'm kind of like trying to mix down and everything um or whatnot um my little daughter she she actually kind of made this i had to kind of coach her hey 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 just play it like t -t -t whatnot but as far as the arrangement and sounds and stuff like that, she she did a thing on here, but whatnot, man. Um, but you know, she was working with a little drum machine right here. Um, and this particular drum machine is from this um uh, little situation right here. Okay, now it's you can kind of track out your. I think this is a multi uh multi channel um VST, but um in this case um uh, it's just a drum kit. You know, saying a stereo uh out drum kit and uh we're gonna see what drums we have on this particular track that's what we got now i want to put reverb on here because if you listen to it with the rest of the track it sounds like it's just dry okay let's check that out We can get a little saucy with it, you know what I'm saying? Add a little bit more uh, excitation. Uh, I made that word up, by the way. Um, but we can add a little bit more excitement uh, to this particular drum kit if we added some reverb, a little sprinkle of reverb on those claps and also the hi-hats as well. But as you can see by the MIDI information, everything, uh, let's take that out of fold right there. All right, cool. So everything that we see here is uh everything is you know saying uh midi information is all in one clip okay and we can't really separate it out um or whatnot unless we kind of solo each instrument and put it on you know record each uh got dog on record each instrument by soloing each sound and recording it on the separate audio tracks that'll be all day every day man or whatnot so i'm gonna show you a trick man check this out if you go to your mixer view right and you get a return track okay what you can do is slap a reverb on here now the recommended reverb i always tell people that's working in ableton 11 is hybrid reverb or whatnot man this particular reverb is awesome because it's a combination of the traditional reverb and ir response um or whatnot and it's just got awfully stupid you know what i'm saying stupid good <laughs> whatnot hybrid reverb it's, it's awesome, man. Uh, so the reverb I have on here is this preset called Clap Hybrid. Sounds pretty good. Uh, we have our driveway mix knob, driveway mix knob all the way at 100%. Kind of did a little uh, little blend here, you know what I'm saying? Just kind of played around with a couple of the different things and whatnot. But the thing I'm running into is having reverb on the entire drum kit. Check this out. This is what we got going on, all right? Now, you can hear the reverb on the kit, right? All right, so you can hear the reverb on the drum kit, right? But when you solo it, this is what you really get. Ah, 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 
Now, pop quiz for you that is watching or whatnot. What is the one sound on this drum kit that does not need to have a reverb? You got it. What would you say? Uh, I can't hear you. Oh, okay. You said the kick. You got it right, man. The kick. Uh, if you're putting reverbs on kicks, uh, sometimes it works and sometimes it, it, it doesn't. If you're doing hip hop, I wouldn't recommend it and stuff like that. Nah. Because what it's going to do, that kick is not going to have definition and you're pushing that kick out of the forefront of the mix. You know what I'm saying? You're pushing it. If you think of uh, a mix in a bubble, um, the kick is basically it needs to be trying to get out of the bubble, but you're pushing it more back in the middle of the bubble or the sphere or whatever the case may be. Um, and you're really kind of pushing it back in the mix and it's really not defined. It's really lopsided and you get this right here. You get that. You don't want that. You kind of want something like this. Kind of like a dry sound to it. So there, this, there's this little EQ plugin. Okay. It's called EQ3. If you can kind of like look at the bottom left corner of the screen here. EQ3 is nothing but a simple three band EQ. Okay. And what it does is, is like you have three sections. You have the low, the mid, and the high frequencies okay uh fixed frequencies and whatnot uh, fixed crossover points okay uh actually let me take that back you have three frequency ranges and you have selectable crossover points okay um these two knobs right here um is how you select the crossover point between low and mid and this knob over here is the crossover point for mid and high and then you have these uh, filter slopes that you can choose in between the filter uh, crossover points right here. So right now we're in 48 uh, dB filter slope. Okay. And then you can also adjust the gain for us that frequency range. So if you need to turn up the lows, you can just simple turn up. You don't have to worry about a frequency or nothing like that because it's fixed. Okay. Or if you need to turn it down and vice versa, we're not on the mid and the high gain. So it's basically the same thing. Now we want to take out the lows and only want, you know what I'm saying? Kind of like the clap or the snare and everything else above that. You know what I'm saying? So we want to isolate the kick or any low sound in the drum kit. I hope you're following. So any low frequency sound in the drum kit, we want to isolate that from the reverb. Now, how would you do that? Of course, there's many different funky ways to do it or whatnot. Uh, especially if you have like these special crossover situation. Look, bro, look, you could just use this EQ3 and be done with it. Okay. I'm going to show you how. All right. So when you do this right here, let's solo the, uh, the, the, the kick and the reverb. Okay. All right. That's what we got. Now check this out. I'm going to take out the highs. See what happens. Oh, shit. We, we just lost the highs. <laughs> you know why? Because we basically turned off the highs. So just imagine this um, being a frequency range between, let's say, for instance, 2,000 kilohertz all the way up to 20,000 kilohertz. Well, guess what? We just took that out. We just bypassed it or we turned down all the gain. You don't hear shit, <laughs> basically, in layman's terms. You don't hear nothing. We just took it out. Let's take out the mids and see what happens. All right. See, you hear the mids? Yeah. Now we're going to take it out. Sound funny as fuck, right? Yeah, where, where, where the goddamn mids at? Or it's the clap. You heard a nice reverb on that clap, you know what I'm saying? Pow, and stuff like that. But we took it out because we're taking out the mid frequency section uh, in between 623 hertz and 2.5 kilohertz. This is what I had said before, by the way, you know what I'm saying? But you can make your own changes and your own adjustments on the crossover points for the frequency low and the frequency high knob, okay? Just a claimer right there, all right? All right, so um, we took out all the mids, okay? Now, pop quiz for you. What do you think is going to happen when you take out the lows? Anybody? Anybody watching out there? Uh, uh, what you said in the back? Well, uh, yeah, yeah, not you, the other viewer. Yeah, there you go, bro, bro. Yeah, so what's going to happen is you're going to take out the lows. 
So now the only thing that's going to get reverb is the mid frequencies and the high frequencies and not the low frequencies. OK, which probably going to consist of one or two kicks, uh, some toms, if you have them in there and any other thick snare that's in a lower register um, or whatnot as far as the pitch is concerned. Yeah, those are not going to get any type of reverb. You, what you want to hear? Let's check it out. Let's see what happens. All right. We're going to play it with everything in. And then I'm going to let y'all know when we take out the lows. Check this out. You can hear that kick still, right? You hear that shit? Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, we're going to take it out. Took out the lows right here. Go. <laughs> yes, sir. We took out the lows. Okay, now you're probably saying like, well, rich man, like how you how you take out the load there, bro? Let me show you. Let me show you. Let me show you. All right. Look, we're going to put this frequency low cross crossover point to its default setting. Okay, so um, right now, when you pull up EQ3, the default crossover point is going to be 250 hertz. Let's do something even better. We're going to bring that bitch all the way down to 50 hertz. Okay, now you're going to get everything. So anything below 50 hertz it's going to be the low frequency range. All right, check this out, man. You know what I'm saying? Um, we going to take out the lows, but we brought our crossover point down to 50 hertz, right? Check this out. You still hear that kick, right? You still hear that kick, right? Mm. Okay, you still hear the kick. All right, let's bring that... Uh, frequency low frequency now back to its default spot at 250 hertz check this out okay so you hear a little bit of the kick not too much of the low end of the kick but more of the high beater of the kick you understand what i'm saying well that's because your crossover point is still bringing in that low information around 250 hertz okay so what you have to do is get smart and start utilizing your brain and your ears for us what's the crossover point that i want to allow the low frequency range to have dominant control over so right now 250 hertz i ain't got my glasses on it says 259 i'm sorry but 259 and below is the low frequency range okay we're gonna bring this up to back where i had it at let's matter of fact let's go to 400 you know what i'm saying let's go to 400 and see what happens all right so everything below 416 hertz uh 416 hertz and below is the low frequency range let's check that out You still hear a little bit of the beater of the kick. Okay, now let's bring it up another 200 hertz and to where I had it at about 637. All right, uh, damn, I can't see y'all. I need my glasses on, bro. Uh, shit. All right, there we go. 646 hertz. That's fine. All right, now here for the kick and the beater of the kick and see if it's still present. It's like you hear the presence of the kick, but you don't hear the beater. You don't hear the low end of the kick. You don't hear none of that. It's more like you hear, you almost feel the kick because you already heard what it is. But in actuality, it's not really there because that kick does not extend all the way up to about 600 hertz. So once you can eliminate that kick out with the low frequency crossover point, which is called freak low on this knob or whatnot, and you take out, the, disengage this uh, low on and off, um band button right here on this eq3 uh plug-in you have eliminated the low frequency range for as it being in control so basically you're bypassing that low frequency range to not be in control okay or actually to be in control you're just turning off the low frequencies but you're utilizing that crossover point to basically kind of narrow down where the low to mid uh the low frequency range and the mid frequency range meet at. And that's where that freak low uh, crossover point or crossover knob is real key and beneficial or whatnot. So um, let's bring that back low back in. We're just going to do a bypass on bypass uh, situation so you can hear for yourself. All right, we got the kick in.
Oh, you hear the difference? Let's let it play one more time. All right, cool. So you heard for yourself. You can definitely hear that low end getting a lot of uh, reverb or whatnot. But if you run into this situation where you have a drum kit and you want to apply reverb, but you can't because it's a two track mix, no worry. Um, you know, saying you should be able to achieve this not only in able to live, but in any in, in any DAW um, that you're working in for us, Logic Studio One Pro uh, Pro Tools. I'm gonna say it, Pro Logic <laughs> Pro Tools or Reaper, whatever. You know, what I'm saying. Utilize the EQ, you know what I'm saying? Any EQ can work. Um, and, and just to give you an example, I'm going to turn that EQ off and I'm going to pull up the old school uh, EQ8, all right? And uh, I'm going to show you how you can do that. So EQ8 is basically the same. You just take your low shelving, okay? You can take your low shelving and you can utilize that. So uh, where we uh, where we at? So you see the low end? Right there where it kind of falling at that, that that frequency um range falling right right here okay so we're just gonna take that frequency knob about right here all right there all right cool and then we're gonna bring out our gain right there so we just use the EQ8. We just brought down the low shelving. Or if you don't want to do it that way, or you don't have an EQ that does that, hopefully you do have an EQ that does that, um, or whatnot, you could just do a uh, a high pass filter. Okay, high pass filter, real simple. Just slide the knob over until you don't hear the kick no more. Probably the best way to do it, to be honest with you. And right at about 441 hertz, you can hear we don't hear shit. All right, bring it up. But you notice when we introduce that Q curve, you can hear a little bit more. So we got to go back more. All right, cool deal. But our Q curve was all the way at like 0.10 Q bandwidth, and that's un, un <laughs> that's unreal. The lowest you'll probably see is like uh, 0.5 Q bandwidth. All right, cool. It's not really effective, but you have to play around with that Q band with in order to get your desired sound. So that's basically how you would do it with a regular EQ um, or whatnot. But EQ3, it's just real simple, man. Just go ahead, turn off L, find your crossover point, and that is it, man. So that's it for this video right here, man. I hope you can find use for your drum kit. If you do have a drum kit or you struggling or you use a machine to do your drums and bring them in able to live, but you want to apply some reverb to it on the mixing side of things, but you just tracked in a two track, not thinking I should have did kicks separately, uh, snare separately, cl uh, clap separately, hi-hat separately or whatnot. Hey, it's all good, man. You can make it happen, man. By this technique, I just showed you guys, man. I hope that's worth your while and stuff like that. You know how to work that YouTube app, man. Go ahead, like this video, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. And subscribe to this channel as well, man. And that's how I get my reverbs to echo, you know what I'm saying, all above that low frequency range, man. This has been your boy, Super Mario. You have been in the yoke with your boy, man. We out.